This video is gonna be for those who are a little bit more out there. That's why I'm wearing my One With The Outdoors t-shirt here because you truly have to be one with the outdoors if you find yourself doing stuff like this. But uh, if you do enjoy stuff like this and uh, you wanna show everyone you are one with the outdoors, you can pick up one of these t-shirts at noblesavageoutdoors.com. Um, but in this video today, I'm gonna to show you how to extract the skunk essence out of that roadkill skunk right there. So first I'll go over like how do you even get a skunk that you can extract the essence out of. Then I'll show you how to extract the, the essence out of this skunk. And finally, you know, how to store that essence if you're gonna sell it to a fur buyer or you know, if you're gonna use it in your own homemade lures and baits. But uh, you can get about 15 to 20 bucks an ounce for this stuff, so it can be worth more than the hide. And, uh, and actually, you'd be surprised at how far, you know, one, if you extract the skunk essence out of one skunk, how many baits and lures you can make. This stuff goes really, really far. So anyway, first thing we gotta do is pick up that skunk over there, so I'll go grab it. So obviously the first way we can go over how to get one of these skunks is uh, roadkill like I'm doing right now, but uh, there are some tips I wanna go over. Um, I saw this skunk on my way to work this morning and it was actually hit in the middle of the road here. So when I went by, I rolled down my window and I smelled to see if there was any skunk essence in the air and I didn't smell anything. So I turned right around, I picked it up off the road here and just pitched it right off the road so I didn't have to deal with it and uh, I knew it wasn't gonna get hit and blow up those, those glands and uh, ruin everything for me. So uh, basically I pitched it right there until I could deal with it after work and I went and got my truck. I went and got a bucket and some gloves so I can grab it. And right here I can, I mean, there is no smell. So you can see it took a little dump when it got hit, but there is no smell right now, that means that those glands should be full. And actually, that's some that's some decent fur on that, some good stripes on it. So I might be able to get get the fur off of this too. Uh, you might wanna check your local, uh, you know, your state rules on this. In PA, you are, as long as you have a fur taker's license, you're allowed to pick up any roadkill, well, any fur bearer's roadkill. Um, that does not include big game. You have to call the game commission if you do that. But Go ahead and put this in the bucket and we'll get it back to the house. So I threw this pallet in the back of my truck just so my truck bed doesn't smell like skunk for weeks if something happens. But uh, I'll go over the other ways you can get a skunk first while I'm getting stuff set up here. Um, basically you can trap one, that's, that's pretty simple, but um, it's the dispatch method that's really important uh, to try to keep as much essence and keep them from spraying. So. Most animals, a lot of people take a 22, shoot them in the head. Um, but from everything I've read, everything I've heard, it's about 80 to 90% chance if you shoot them in the head that they're going to spray. So if that's your method of kill, um, it's not great for, for getting the skunk essence. And it's really not great for having to deal with a s smelly skunk afterwards. Um, so, uh, Basically, if you have the 22 and that's you, that's the way you're going to do it, uh, you're better off shooting them in the lungs from a reasonable distance. You can get pretty close to a skunk while they're in a trap without them spraying, as long as you move pretty slow. But uh, definitely shoot them in the lungs with a 22. Then it's about a 50/50 shot whether they're going to spray or not. Um, but the best method is if you have them in a trap and you fix up like a uh, what they call a dispatch pole, which basically um, we're going to use the same syringe that we're going to use later to extract the skunk essence, something like this. Um, you want a pretty thick needle. Uh, I don't know exactly what gauge it is, but it's it's pretty thick. So you want to put this on the end of a pole, uh, fill it with acetone is what a lot of people use. And even, even the nuisance trappers who get paid to do it, if they're doing nuisance trap work, or they're doing government work or something, they have to use a special formulated, uh, you know, kill serum. But uh, a lot of them, when they're doing it on their own, they'll just use acetone and they say it works just as good. So uh, acetone on the end of a stick and you have to have something to actuate this. You, about 10 feet away, you use a long stick, poke them pretty gently and then inject them with acetone and they'll die within a few minutes. So. Uh, and most, almost all the time, they don't spray if you do that. So that's the best way to, to get a skunk that hasn't sprayed 
because um, most of the time you pick, you see them on the road and they've sprayed. I got lucky on this one. I know I'm going to get asked, so uh, I'll address it. I'm going to get asked why I have two sets of gloves here. And the reason is because gloves are not like condoms. You can wear two of them and there's more protection. So that's what I'm going to do. Alright, so I'm going to start by cutting into this just like uh, I would any animal. Start at the, the heel. Money cut first. Okay, so now that we got it to here, you can see uh, all I did was do, cut a ring around the vent, being very careful because these are the, the glands here that have the essence in them. If you nick into those, um, you're going you're gonna to smell for a few days. So uh, be really careful and basically just start, you just start skinning it just like you would uh, any animal and stay close to the skin as long as you stay close to the skin. Um, you should be fine. So once we expose these, we can poke into those and draw the essence out of them. And that's what I'm gonna do now. So now what you're gonna want is some sort of glass jar and a metal lid. Um, and it actually will eat away at the this the little rubber seal in there. It'll eat away at that. So you wanna avoid contact with that as well as uh, avoid contact with the metal because eventually it will eat away at the metal itself. It's very potent stuff, so um, get your glass jar ready, and uh, this is the part where it gets pretty stinky. I only do this stuff outside, so again, you want a pretty thick needle, and it's pretty simple. You just poke into it. There we go. Now I'm in, and I start to draw that off. Hopefully you can see that when it starts to draw out. There you go. See all that yellow? And again, this is typical of one that, uh, that hasn't sprayed. We're getting quite a bit out of it. Whenever you feel comfortable, you're just going to empty that into this jar. Alright, so that's pretty much it for extracting it. Um, the one thing you do want to do, if you want to save this, um, you want to fill it, it fill it with water uh, and squirt it out a few times and then when you store it pull it full of water and leave the water in it uh, that'll dilute the the little bit of residue that's in there and it won't eat away at your seals and stuff like that so uh, and then obviously store this outside or you know in your shed whatever uh, same with this uh, once you get glass again uh, metal lid if you can you can tape around this with electrical tape, or you can actually even seal it with wax. That'll keep the scent down. Uh, you can store this in your shed, uh, or if you if you're worried about uh, it smelling in your shed or um, or getting too hot in your shed, you can actually put this in like another glass jar. This is what I typically do. I have some old stuff in here. I put it into another glass jar, and uh, you can bury it. Um, and you want to bury it deep enough that no critters are going to dig it up. So, you know, a foot, foot and a half deep and mark it so you know where it's at. And that'll keep the scent down. That'll keep it from heating up during the, you know, warm summer days. Uh, and it'll, uh, that'll store it well enough that you can use it for any one of your lures. It's fine. One more thing before I end this. Uh, right now we're headed into our second weekend of self-quarantine uh, for the coronavirus, COVID-19. And... Uh, Basically, you know, if you're doing stuff like this, 
picking up roadkill skunks, tearing them apart, pulling the essence out of them, getting that smell all over you. It's an excellent way to social distance yourself. Nobody's going to want to come within six feet of you, I can guarantee that. So you'll be safe from the coronavirus. But uh, in all seriousness, you know, that's one great thing about being an outdoorsman. You know, I'm up here on the top of the hill. Nobody's around. I am social distancing, but I'm still doing the things I love. And uh, if you didn't find this useful or, you know, you're never going to use it, hopefully at least you found it entertaining during these crazy times we're in. But uh, if you did, please like, share, subscribe. And as always, get out there and be one with the outdoors.